Good morning, dear Jefferson friends. My prayer is that uh, this day finds you well uh, and uh, healthy uh, as we continue to live in the new normal and look toward the time when we can gather again together in person. Today I'd like to share a message called, Who's in Control? And the scriptures that I'd like to share are from Joel 2, 28 and 29, and Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Listen, this is God's word for you and me. And afterward, I'll pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And then in Ephesians 5. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. And would you pray with me, please? Gracious God, these are challenging times, confusing times. We pray for wisdom and discernment as we move forward, as we uh, seek to deal with a worldwide pandemic. And Lord, as we seek to see the pandemic of racism finally find a cure. Lord, help us to hear your word today and to trust that you are in control. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's really my message today is the question, who is in control? Because frankly, uh, not many of us feel as if we've got much control these days. So much in our life uh, is happening in, in ways that really goes beyond anything that we can do. And uh, we are living daily, looking for the way to live that day to the glory of God. So who is in control of your life? <clears throat> we like to think we're in control of our lives, and in a limited sense, we are. But ultimately, of course, we're not. I mean, how long will you live? What will tomorrow bring? Did you choose your family where you were born, your race or your intelligence or your height or your hair color? Oh, okay, I'll give you that one. You can choose your hair color. But... In so many other ways, uh, you can choose who you would like to be your friends, but you can't make them your friends. You can choose who you will love, but you can't choose who will love you back. These are things that are out of our control. As good Presbyterians, we all confess on a regular basis that God is sovereign, that he and he alone is in charge. But do we live as if that's true? How can we live in a life, a life in harmony with God's purpose and will? How can we, as the scripture says, be filled with the Spirit? First of all, being filled with the Spirit isn't something that we do for ourselves. We can't fill ourselves. There's no magic formula for being filled with the Spirit. It's something that's done by God and God alone through a relationship purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ and sealed in the power of the Holy Spirit. We don't fill ourselves. God fills us with the Spirit. The scriptures are full of examples of people who from time to time were full of the Spirit. Gideon was full of the Spirit. David was full of the Spirit. Peter, full of the Spirit. Paul, full of the Spirit. In Acts, the disciples are guided to choose men full of the Spirit and of wisdom to be deacons in the church. The apostles, filled with the Spirit, did many signs and wonders, but no one except Jesus was always filled with the Spirit. And even he was only filled with the Spirit after his baptism at the River Jordan. So being filled with the Holy Spirit doesn't mean 
always being in some ecstatic state of heightened spirituality. It rather is being available to the one who pours out the Spirit on a continual basis. Yet there are moments when we experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit more than others. But it's also the in-between moments that we can be open to God's leading and open to his power. It may be when we least expect it that the Spirit is the most noticeable in our lives. I know this has been true for me so many times. I've shared the story several times with all of you of, of after a healing service, praying for a little boy and, and finding God bring healing power to him and uh, turning to uh, the person that was mentoring me at the time and saying, uh, this healing thing really isn't uh, my thing. She asked me to read Luke 4, 18 to 20. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, recovery of sight to the blind, freedom to the captives, and liberty to the oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then she asked the question, what other ministry is there that is the ministry of Jesus? That changed my life, and yet it was an unexpected moment of the Spirit's power. I remember another time I was pastor at Bay Road Presbyterian Church in Glen Falls, New York, and my daughter was a sophomore at Virginia Tech, and we had been going around and around and around, and every conversation dealt with money. It seemed that she and I had different philosophies on the source of money. She seemed to think that it just spontaneously appeared, and I was struggling to try to earn enough to get us all by. I remember driving to church and praying, Lord, how can I stop this merry-go-round with Aaron? And in my spirit, I heard this voice. Larry, you can't stop the merry-go-round, but you can step off anytime you choose. As I thought about that, I realized that she was much more important to me than other things. We worked it out, and uh, frankly, it really healed and blessed the relationship with my daughter Aaron. I'll never forget as Linda prepared for her cancer surgery in 2001. Friends had been praying for her healing and she had sensed uh, uh, something had happened that her energy had returned. And when she talked to all the surgeons and there were four of them that were going to operate on her uh, for uh, her kidney and her lungs and her heart and vascular system and for her liver. And she said to each of those doctors, after they had, of course, shared all the things that could go wrong. She simply said to them, I don't know what God's done, but I know that he's done something. Please don't take anything out that you don't have to. And as I've shared with you, the Lord blessed her and healed her. Finally, I remember going to, to Newburgh, New York as an interim pastor to a church Frankly, that I was a very poor theological match with. This church was uh, an interesting history and hadn't had a Bible study in 25 years before I got there. I remember saying to the Lord, Lord, what am I doing here? Again, I heard in my spirit, preach the word, love the people, don't go looking for a fight, and if it comes to you, duck and let it go to the cross. I know those are personal moments, but moments when unexpectedly, I believe the Spirit touched my life in a very powerful and meaningful way, ways that changed the path of my life. So here's the bottom line. We have the choice each and every day to decide who is in control of our lives. You can depend on yourself to live safely, try to control your own life, or you can live as you were created to live as a temple of the Holy Spirit of God, as a person dependent on him, desperate for God the Spirit to show up and make a difference. When we begin to live a life characterized by walking with the Spirit, that's when people will begin to look not at us, but to the Father and give him all the praise. As Jesus said in Matthew 5, 16, you are the light of the world. 
Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. When we live like that, when we live available to the filling of the Holy Spirit, it affirms every day that God is in control. Thanks be to God. I'd like to close in prayer, but as I close, I also will invite you to join as we share the Lord's Prayer together. Gracious God, thank you for your word, for your guidance, for your spirit, for your Son, who has given us life, eternal life. Lord, help us to see that even in these chaotic times, you are in control. So fill us with your spirit, that we might walk with you day by day. And Lord, hear this prayer as we pray it together, the one that your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Be blessed, dear friend.